So we are going to learn about the cross product for two three-dimensional vectors. Now previously we talked about the dot product, you can check that video in the description, and one of the reasons the dot product was useful is it let us determine whether two vectors are orthogonal. But one question you might have is, what if we have two vectors already and we want another one that's orthogonal to both of them? And that is why the cross product is useful. If we take a vector a and cross it with the vector b, we get the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b times the sine of the angle between them and then times n. Remember, this whole part is going to be a scalar, just a number. This n here is a vector, and that n stands for normal. Normal means the same thing as orthogonal and perpendicular. It means that we are going to get a vector at a 90 degree angle to both of our inputs. So if we can find a formula that gives us this cross product result without us already knowing what that normal vector is, that's going to be super useful later down the line when we want to find vectors that are normal to our other vectors. Let's start thinking about exactly what's going on here. First of all, when we think about whether a vector is normal to another vector, we have to realize that there isn't just one normal vector. In this case, when we take this n, we're saying it's a unit vector, meaning it has a magnitude of 1, so it's not scaling up our result at all. But let's say we had two vectors like this that were both in the plane, this horizontal plane here. One way we could have a normal vector to both of those would be to have one that points straight up. That would form a right angle here and a right angle here. But we could just as easily have a vector that points down, and that would also be normal. The question is, which one do we choose? And that is where something called the right-hand rule comes in. So let's say we have a vector that points this direction, and then we also have a vector that points like this. The right hand rule says we take our right hand, only a right hand, and we start out by pointing all of our fingers in one direction, the direction of our first vector. So let's say this is A and this is B. We point all our fingers in the direction of A, and then we curl some of them towards B, just like that. If we stick our thumb out, that direction of our thumb is the direction of the normal vector under the cross product. So that is just what we define to say that's what we're calling the normal vector in this case. So for this instance, our vector will be pointing straight out of the page. On the other hand, instead of A cross B to point out, what if we took B cross A? Well, in that case, we would get the same magnitude, but Instead of starting with A and curling our fingers toward B, we'd have to start with B. Well, we can't really curl our fingers toward A right now, that's weird. So I'm going to have to change my orientation. If I turn my hand the other direction, point my fingers towards B, suddenly I can actually curl these fingers on the bottom towards A. And in that case, notice my thumb is pointing into the whiteboard as opposed to out. So we actually have the opposite normal vector in the case of B cross A. And that means that A cross B is negative of B cross A. So now that we understand the cross product a little bit, we can start thinking about what a formula has to include. In this case, we need to start out with our X, Y, and Z axes, taking the cross products of our most basic vectors. Those are I hat, J hat, and K hat. Remember that our vectors i, j, and k come from just standard unit vectors in the x, y, and z directions. So i hat is going to go in the x direction, j hat in the y direction, k hat in the z direction. Let's think about what happens if we take i hat crossed with itself. So we have our x direction vector crossed with our x direction vector. What will we get in this formula? Well, first of all, we have to look at the sine of theta. What's the sine of the angle between a vector and itself? Well, that angle is just going to be 0 degrees, and the sine of 0 degrees is 0, meaning that i hat cross i hat 
is just going to be the zero vector. And that's going to apply to any vector when we cross it with itself. So let's try to think about something a little more interesting. Say we take i hat and cross it with j hat. Now in order to do this, we have to remember that this x, y, z axes I've written on the board here are actually supposed to be in three dimensions. And the x-axis in particular is going to point out of the board, not just along the side here. So when we think about the direction of i hat, that's actually going to point out of the board. So I'll point my fingers this way, and when we're crossing with j hat, we're going to turn them in the direction of the y-axis. Where does the sum point? Well, it's going to point towards z, which means we're going to get some multiple of k hat, since k hat is our z unit vector. The magnitude of i hat is 1, the magnitude of j hat is 1, since they're unit vectors, and the sine of the angle between them is 90 degrees, since the x-axis and the y-axis are orthogonal. So this is the answer for i hat cross j hat. It's just going to be this k. If you use the right-hand rule for the other unit vectors, you'll find that j hat cross k hat is equal to i hat. And if you do i hat cross k hat, well, let's think about what that would be. i hat is going to point out of the board. k hat points in the z-axis direction. So I have to turn my hand like this and curl my fingers up. If I look at the normal vector, it's going to point this direction. That's going to be the y-axis, but the wrong way. So we're going to get a negative result. i hat cross k hat is going to be negative j hat. These are the three building blocks that we can use to build our cross product. The final identity we'll need is that the cross product is distributive, which means a cross b plus c is going to equal a cross b plus a cross c. And I'm not going to prove this in this video, but you can check the link in the description for a proof or just an intuition of why exactly this works. So now that we have these formulas and this identity ready, we can start thinking about a general formula for the cross product of vectors. Let's say we wanted to take the cross product of a1, a2, a3, our 3D vector, crossed with b1, b2, b3. This is the part where splitting vectors up in terms of i, j, and k becomes useful. What we're going to do is write a1, a2, a3 as a1 i hat plus a2 j hat plus a3 k hat. And we're going to cross that with b1 i hat plus b2 j hat plus b3 k hat. The reason this is useful is we can split each of these parts up using the distributive property. So we can take a1, b1, a1, b2, a1, b3, and so on all by themselves, and just use these rules that we derived earlier to figure out the formula. So I'm going to do that just with the first two components of each part here, but the algebra is going to work out exactly the same either way. When we look at a1 i hat cross b1 i hat, well, we know any vector crossed with itself is zero. So in this case, because we have two i hats here, we don't have to worry about that. The same applies with a2 j hat and b2 j hat. That's just going to cancel out. Now when we look at a1 i hat and b2 j hat, those vectors are not parallel. So in this case, a1 and b2 are both constants. We can pull that out of the cross product calculation. So we have a1 b2 times i hat cross j hat. That's going to be k hat. Now if we look at a2 and b1, a2 times b1, we can put right here. And what is j hat cross i hat? Well, we know i cross j gives us k. But remember, if we flip these two around, we're going to get a negative coming out as our result. So j hat cross i hat is going to be a negative k hat. So this is the z component of the result for our cross product. And I'm going to write out the result for the x and y components as well. So once you expand out the algebra for this cross product in terms of i hat, j hat, and k hat, 
this is the entire result that you get. Now let's take a look at each of these coefficients here of our unit vectors. a2b3 minus a3b2 can actually be written as the determinant of a matrix. If we have a2a3 and then b2b3 as our two rows. We can do the same thing for the other parts here. If we have a1a3, b1b3, and then for the last one, a1a2, b1, b2. So we have the determinants of three different two by two matrices as the coefficients of each of our vectors. And if you've seen my video on three dimensional determinants, check the link in the description for that, you might recognize this as a giant example of the determinant of a three by three matrix. We can write the determinant of that matrix as i hat, j hat, k hat, a1, a2, a3, b1, b2, b3. If you take a look at the formula for the 3D determinant that I gave in that video in the description, you'll find that when you expand this out, you get exactly the result that we see here. Now technically, this is not actually a determinant because the determinant of a matrix has to be in terms of scalars and i, j hat and k hat are all vectors. So this doesn't technically work. However, it's very useful to use this formula just as a way to remember how the cross product actually works out. It's a lot easier to remember this and then to expand it out in terms of the determinant formula so that you have a little less in your head. So that is the formula for the cross product. And we're going to use this formula along with the fact that it gives us a normal vector when we start looking at things like the equations of planes a little longer in the future.